Well everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the Xbox Series S and see how this specific console is holding up and it's going to hold up for the next couple years in 2023. Now if you want to pick up this console, luckily for us, I think they're pretty much available in the majority of places that are selling them. So I will leave some links in the description from Amazon. If you want to pick them up from there, you can get them and you can also help support the channel at the same time. Now some things I want to lay the land out first. The Xbox Series S came out in 2020. It's a very interesting year. So this year it is going to be approaching three years old. Now I bought this console, if you guys don't remember, if you're probably just watching my channel for the first time, I bought these consoles in 2020 and the only thing I could keep thinking to myself was, wow, these consoles are very good, both the Series X and S, but wow, my Xbox One X and my Xbox One S still hold up very well against something like this console. But then guess what? Year after year after year, I still kept seeing a lot of games being ported over to the Xbox One series. I kept seeing a lot of applications and I kind of saw to myself, wow, a lot of things are going digital and a majority of game developers are still going to be supporting probably both consoles, pro maybe forever, who knows? Like I honestly don't know how this is going to go, but even now, a lot of games that are still being supported and a lot of the development that is going on for the Xbox Series S is also being ported down to the Xbox One X and the One S. So I say that to say, you know, I'm not saying that for no reason, if you still own something like an Xbox One S or an Xbox One X, going up to an Xbox Series S, I think is a very good choice. You might not, you might need the disc tray to be honest, but if you don't, and if all your games are basically digital, you are going to have a very solid console from something like the Xbox Series S. It's going to be plenty of powerful, and you're going to be able to take advantage of that like next generation of gaming whenever, you know, we get like some really good games, which we already have. This console is definitely going to be able to handle it, which is amazing. But if you still own like an Xbox One X or an Xbox One S, I still think you can probably go another year, you know, without even like upgrading and still have a really good time using it. So I think that in and of itself is a pretty interesting thing to keep in mind. Now on the outside of the Xbox Series S, not much has changed. There hasn't really been some like recall program for them to change anything, which is great. I, I have nothing against that at all. And I definitely do things with something like the Xbox Series S. The design is unique in and of itself that it can still stand the test of time for many years to come, which is actually pretty cool. Now on the outside, on the front, we do have that specific little like grill that's like a circle on the top. And I do think that makes this console stand out so much against any of the other consoles, which is so funny. I've always found that, I've always found that so interesting in and of itself for Microsoft to make this type of design. And I still think it holds up very well from that standpoint. Now on top of that, on the front, you do have that USB port, which I think is great. Having that USB port next to the power button is awesome. You can just plug in things and the only, I'll get into it in a second, but you know, I feel like play station may have done it a little bit better you know with the port selection but on the back of this console you do get some really good ports that i would say so first of all you are getting that ethernet port which is awesome you're getting an additional two usb ports on this console which is great you're getting another storage expansion slot if you really are into it and you're also getting that little ac adapter thing all at the very very end so you have quite a bit of io from this tiny console which is really cool and that's the craziest thing this is such a small footprint compared to the xbox series x but you are getting a very powerful console still which is awesome now one of the things that i've kind of alluded to early on was that with the port selection i feel like microsoft should have added a usb-c port on this console and even now through almost three years later i still feel the exact same way they should have went ahead and added some sort of usb-c port on this console besides just having it on like the controller i feel like that was kind of a flop on their end i feel like the next generation they're probably going to do that or if there's an xbox series s2 or like a series c whatever they're going to call it then that console is probably going to end up having it but i feel like they should have added it on this one playstation ended up doing it a majority of the PCs that Microsoft's developed already had USB-C, so I understand why they didn't already put it on here, but it is what it is. There's not much we can do about it. And that kind of covers it up on the outside. Now, beyond that, like I've said, there's been lots of games that have came out for this console too, which is awesome. But another interesting thing was that I would say one of the biggest developments is that this console is much easier to get as of right now than what it was even a year ago when I made the same exact video. So a lot of people have been going around stating like, you know, one of the biggest issues of buying something like an Xbox, you know, or any of the newer generation of consoles was that they just weren't available. It was just really hard to get your hands on. But now, even with me, you know, pretty much going on to Amazon.com right now, I'm getting them, I, I'm able to get them delivered to me pretty much within like 10 days from, 
you know, when I don't you know, order it, which at that end of itself is actually pretty crazy. I remember three years ago when people were trying to get their hands on them. And I remember when I was able to buy one, not even that early, probably within like a week or two when it came out. And, you know, I remember the people who I was, you know, I was I bought at Best Buy. They're like, wow, you know, I can't believe you got it. Like, that's so cool. And I was like, man, this actually feels pretty good. <laughs> like, I actually ended up buying it. Maybe they were just saying it. I don't know. But I remember during that time, you know, a lot of people were trying to get their hands on this console, much like when an iPhone comes out, like the 14 Pro came out and people were trying to buy it and they were delayed for so long. Now that these Xboxes are starting to be able to come into more people's hands, I think there's going to be a massive room for development coming out now, probably this year and next year, where there's going to be a lot more games coming out specifically for these consoles. And there's already been a lot of development for these newer consoles, but I still look at older ones like the Xbox One X and One S. There's been, I mean, there's just such a humongous library of games from those consoles it's not even fair but i think the series s is catching up quite a bit now from the performance side i will still say from every video i've seen from an xbox series s owner including the newest kind of dolphin emulation that you can do on your xboxes which is crazy it's literally mind-blowing the coolest thing that i've seen is that a lot of people are not complaining about the performance. In fact, they're kind of bragging about the performance of this type of console and stating that, you know, compared this price about $300 to like a, you know, equivalent like priced gaming PC, you are actually pretty much getting a very powerful console from this thing. And I mean, with all the games that you can play, I mean, those games are optimized for this console. They're going to work perfectly fine. And of course, the Series X is going to be more powerful, but I look at a console like this and I'm very surprised about how good of a job, you know, Microsoft did here. It's one of the cheaper consoles of this generation right now. It's even pretty much cheaper than like a Nintendo Switch, if you kind of think about it. So that in and of itself is kind of a crazy thing to keep in mind too. So if you're wondering about the power situation, I still think it's perfectly fine. I don't think a lot of people have been complaining about the performance from that. And in fact, I've seen the quite opposite. I've seen people bragging about the performance and stating that this specific, you know, console can almost replace their gaming PC, which is insane in my opinion. So that is another big thing to keep in mind too. Now, beyond that, there are some other th reasons maybe why you'd want to pick up an Xbox Series X. You know, you can output into higher resolutions. You have more power from that type of console as well. I think you might be able to get them, like, not cheaper than the Series S, but you can probably get them just as easy as the Series S. You know, it's still going to be more expensive, but that's another cool thing. I would still say the biggest issue I have with the Xbox Series S is the lack of a disc tray, but it seems like people are okay with it. You know, I'm not using my Series S every single day. I'm more like using my Nintendo Switch, but this is still a very good console nonetheless. You know, there's a couple of pet peeves, like I mentioned, that the lack of a disc tray that I just said, but also the lack of a USB-C port. I would have loved to have seen that, but I think those things kind of go away when you consider, you know, one, this is not supposed to be the, you know, main flagship Microsoft console. This is supposed to be a cheap one that's, you know, kind of there for a lot of people, and I think this is a great console still to buy if you want to you know pick up a cheaper one you can go with the xbox one s if you don't mind that you can't play some of the newer games but i think this console knocked it out of the park there's still a lot of overlap between this and an xbox series x and i would honestly recommend buying it for sure like there's never going to be a bad time to buy this console even 10 years from now we're still going to be talking about it in 2033 so i look at this console and i'm very happy about it but I've said this before, I look at the Xbox series, you know, uh, the Xbox One S and the One X, and I think those consoles held up very well for their time. The One S especially, I love that console so much. One of my favorite design consoles, and the Series S kind of looks like it too. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.